again because you totally fucked that up. I did fuck it all up. I, did. I totally hit record. Okay. It's recording now, but I just started it over. Can you do your voice again? Just to, just to be sure. Right? Hi, this is Tony Teagarden, and welcome to the awesome podcast. Dude, yeah. See, you don't even know what it's called. The awesome podcast. <laughs> the awesome podcast called there. Uh, called there. Uh, all I know is I'm on a podcast right. with two foreigners. Yeah. I'm on a podcast with two foreigners. I cannot freaking understand. Oh, yeah. Hey, That's hey, hey how, weird, how weird is that? Because I'm on a podcast with two foreigners, too. Fuck you now. That the answer that what the answer that happening? Fucking I don't know. I know. Not that's pretty good oh, time. Man. So I could introduce Tony because yeah. so basically uh Olivier is our booking agent for the show. Um, no, I'm the PA. I'm Barbara. Yeah, right, yeah, he's a he's a booking agent, but no fucker likes him, so he can't get anybody on. <laughs> so uh, I have that's to dive so in at the last true. minute and that's bring so people. <laughs> It is. He can't even get people to respond to him. I mean, he, 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 he's, he's too low even to tell to fuck off. You know, he's not, he, he's not even at the fuck off credibility of his emails. It's just like delete, you know, junk, uh, trash, block. You know, his email is probably bad. blocked from. Um, um, it's not like we're aiming for some. A friend of mine had a, had a podcast once, and they managed. I'm not sure if I've said this to you before. They got the they got the cast of West Wing on it. The oh, day, really? the day that West Wing finished filming, because they gave off this impression it was called Radio Green Room, and, and they gave off the impression that they got this was I'm going back. So how long did it go? Did it finish? Ten, twelve years, I guess. And uh, they had no idea that they, they, there was no fucking audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were interviewing Martin Sheen and what have you on this program. He's got so much balls. So I think so. It's not like we're aiming for people. He's aiming for people I've never even fucking heard of. They haven't even got a Wiki- <laughs> Them, these people haven't even got a Wikipedia page, and they're not even responding to his email. How bad's that? You know? what, 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 what are you saying? That I am lacking some skills, maybe some media skills, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Something all, like all of the above. Yeah. Anyway, so I I reached out to Tony when you failed to get anybody for the nth time. I don't know how many times it is. So I reached out to Tony. Because the one, of the, one of the reasons why I thought I'd like we, we should have Tony on is because uh, he understands Couldn't about... Couldn't find anybody else. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think we've already established that. <laughs> you were our only choice. It was, me, it was either me and him or me him and you. And quite honestly, uh, you're more entertaining than he is. So uh, I've known Tony a long time online, probably six, seven years, I bet, isn't it? It must be. So yeah, I, I can remember when he first came online, me thinking it was a made-up name. That's Tony Teagarden. That's just like, well, you should be an Englishman in a, in a play. You should be an actor, you know, on this Royal Shakespeare Company starring Tony Teagarden. So tell us a bit about yourself. Great, great uh, intro, wasn't it? You know, that's, that was a fucking smooth segue, that, that was. That's a poor question, man. Anyway, sorry, Tony. That was, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> I, have never, I have never been introduced in such a in, theatrical and amazing manner. Inept, I think so. Until word. today. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you owe him some money to say that? Or? <laughs> I hope not, because I want a refund as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so yeah, I've known Tim for yeah online. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny because um, you know I I started out uh, blogging in the personal development realm, and uh, you know quote unquote I have no you know life coaching certifications. I'm not awesome like Tim. He um, doesn't have any as well, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but you know I think the cool thing is is him, like him. You know both and I we have a pretty uh, pretty deep desire. Uh, you know to to know about things and people and to support and help people grow. And, um, you know, so I started out in that realm. Um, I'm a musician by trade, you know, classically trained violinist, uh, you know, played guitar now for about 24 years. I was in a, a death metal band. That's my claim to fame as a young adult. Um, roar, you know, that sort of thing. That's what I was doing back in the day. Um, and uh, had a lot of fun with that and, you know, just got into sales. Uh, my mid-20s, sold a lot of stuff, uh, manufactured homes, mobile homes. Uh, you know, you slam the door and the floor plan changes. <laughs> is that um, an industry joke there? Yeah, it is. And yeah, I can that's tell. an industry yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, thanks for laughing at me. <laughs> no, it's funny. Um, and you didn't get it, but that's yeah. fine. I'm French. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's French. You guys don't have trailers in France, I don't think. No, we have only um, castles. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. everyone lives in the castle. Yeah. I actually, when I was in the band, when I was in uh, I was Switzerland, I woke up one morning. You have to understand, like, I'm from originally from, like, Thanota, Sassa, Florida, um, which, you know, it's about as hard to live in as it is to pronounce. It's a pretty small place. And, um, is it clan country? You know, it's very, what's is that? It clan country. 
Uh, maybe I think so. Yeah, yeah it's very. I know it's very flat. <laughs> Florida, Florida's fat. You know, it's flat. flat. What's that got to do? But, um, clan. Uh, like Ku- oh, clan. clan. Yeah, sorry. Clan. Ku Klux Klux. This isn't Ireland, dude. I don't know clans. I don't get clans. Um, yeah. So you know, it was just funny because I remember in um, you know, I was like. Nine, no, I was 20, 21 years old, and I'm in Switzerland, and I wake up this mor- one morning, get off the bus, and um, I look, and there's this huge castle on the mountainside, and then, you know, like, this big lake in the middle, and that was just, it was pretty majestic, and it was um, pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't, you know, never really got to see too many castles before, so that was my first. Huh. Um, but off of my 18th fragmented thought, I um, You've eventually not taken I, I got in today, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I'm about to have my third cup of coffee. Damn it. Uh, no, that'll, wor- that'll work. Yeah. So, yeah, so that'll Tony, work. can I interrupt just one second? Man, can sure. you turn on your camera because I'm looking at your picture smiling. I'm, no, I'm seeing him. He's got his camera turned on. I can see him. It's you again. You can, no, but we're, you, we're... Tim, can you turn on your camera? Oh, me? Tim. Fuck, yes, you, you. you are smiling like a, like a goof. Or like, <laughs> like a girl. Like a girl. Actually, you shouldn't say like a girl. I saw a whole blog post where you shouldn't say like a girl. Oh, you, here you are. You never ch- Oh, you haven't changed. You're still the same. I don't know. I kind of like the other I, picture. I, I can turn I, off your camera right now. I actually haven't changed for a couple of days now you mention it. Oh, I showered for you guys and everything. So. Sorry, Tony. God. Go on. Don't, don't arouse me. Yes, carry it's on. All good. So, yeah, I mean, long story short, now today I moved from uh, doing personal development, blogging, some coaching and stuff, and now um, I, based on my own journey going through all of that, I, mean, I still did pretty well and did pretty, uh, you know, fair amount of business and, and uh, kind of was able to fire my other industry that I was in, um, and then slowly progressed. Now I do uh, coaching and mentoring in regards to, like, marketing, so I work with a lot of you know, coaches, experts, specialists, niche bloggers, helping to take their specialty and their expertise and uh, turn that, transform it into, uh, you know, hiring coaching programs. So that's what I do now. At least that's my work. Otherwise, I just walk around looking cool. Kind of. Do you see? <laughs> well, we, we, we may, may tell you suffer from the same mental disorder. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Actually, yeah, yeah. I yeah. can see that why you're friends. Complete denial. Yeah, of, of, of what we look like. So, can, can I say something? You know, I like we no, have a, I know we all got the same microphones. This is exciting on the podcast that nobody can see, but we've all got no. the same very phallic <laughs> microphone. But I was just thinking, but the mine is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. I'm going to see Mitch Fatal tonight. Does any of you, you oh. two know Mitch Fatal, the comedian? No, I don't know this one. Oh no, that killed that. Okay. So that's, 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 he's brilliant. He's I brilliant. know we were on. A, we were on a roll, and phallic and yeah, and else and yeah. Okay, it. so you had a brief uh, question in your mind. I can see that coming. Process that, yeah. Thing. Please, please, please. Question. Me, yeah. Well, there's a couple of ways we could go with this. We could go um, the professional route, but we don't know how. We don't know the path to that one. <laughs> Which or we, I was going to say that's what I mean. We don't know. We don't know. We don't fucking what professional podcasters do. But um, here's the thing with Tony that I like about Tony is I. Um, First of all, he, he, he's <laughs> this is he's trying to find something nice <laughs> to no, say. <laughs> no, but this is kind of paradoxical. This is going to be ironic when I actually say it because I'm going to say he's one of the easiest people I know to talk to. So I can phone him up, and I only ever phone him up when I need some help. You know, I don't phone him up just no, say no, hello. no, 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 no. Let's tell the truth. You also butt dial the hell out of me. Oh yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I've never had anybody butt dial well, me in the last year more times as, than you. Well, do you know, here's, here's what happens, butt dialing, you know, where you accidentally dial somebody because the number's in speed dial, so you put your phone in your po- back pocket, you butt <laughs> oh. dial them. Okay, so you probably don't... And he's already that. told me so, I'm like one of four people Yeah, I was going to say, dial, so, so, so I used to have like about 20 people on my speed dial, and one by one they'd say, just, dude, take me off your fucking speed dial, I'm sick of you. <laughs> so i take them off, but then that obviously, exponentially, every, every other person on my speed dial is then more likely to get butt dialed because there's less people on the speed dial. And I'm now down to just Tony. Tony. <laughs> and he's so, too polite to tell me to take me take him off my speed dial. So what is the weirdest moment that you've heard? You know when he was speed dialing you, right? And uh, was um, it in the toilet or sharing some? No, thank God. No. Thank God, I've never heard any of those. Okay. But there was, I could definitely tell, like it was in his pocket or something, and it was it was pretty scary. Yeah, I, I know that. Okay, cool. I once dropped yeah. out. I once had to go and meet a colleague 
at uh, the, the big prison in Manchester, in England, I can't think what it's called now. This is a really Victorian, huge building. So what we said is we'd phone each other just before we got there because we weren't sure about the geography of it because we, we got this sales meeting, not at the prison, just at a place close by it. And I went into, uh, for anybody in England that's listening to this, I don't know why the fuck I'm saying that because there's nobody listening to it full stop, but you know, just on that off chance that no, somebody stumbles on it by mistake. That's not, that's not true, by the way. We, oh, have right. fif- we have 15 subscribers. <laughs> Tony's, Tony, Tony's like, now, nah, okay, I'm off. 15 fucking subscribers. But, but hey, Tony, guys, I just got a call. Yeah, I've got yeah, to get yeah, yeah. I've just remembered I've got to wash my hair. Yeah. I don't think they're butt dialing. So, so um, <laughs> anyway, I, I went to Sainsbury's, for anybody in England, and I went to take a, a piss, and I leaned over to uh, flush the... the, the toilet and my phone fell out of my, my shirt pocket down the toilet i had to fish down a public toilet to get my phone out i know everybody's like here and then mm. this story was a lot better in my head before i started it because then, <laughs> yeah, then obviously my phone didn't so, so i'm driving thing. round and round is it pentonville prison looking like it isn't pentonville pa- pa- no somebody write in write in with an answer we'll have hundreds of people write mm. in now let's let's Talk about you again, Tony, because <laughs> I'm making a complete Clearly. dick of myself. This is my poorest performance to date, and that's quite, that's, 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 an, that's an achievement. I can tell you, I had some bad performances. Any so what, what I was going to say, yourself, Tony? No, okay, no, okay. but I like, it is the thing with Tony and internet marketers. Internet marketers, to my, in my experience, most of them got a fucking sense of humour. Is, is that, I thought, you, do you know something, Tony? I have only just thought about that. And I'm thinking about all the people, all the internet marketers I... And you, you know, you've got a good... Well, I think you've got a good sense of humour because you laugh at the stuff. I think you're laughing at me rather than with me a lot of the time. I get that. <laughs> you know, and some of the things you say make me laugh. Or there, was one, there was one thing once, I think. Um, but do you think yeah. that's true? Is, is, do you notice that? Or, is, or, or do you all... The, uh, get past my meetings, you're all guffawing for like two hours at a time. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's funny. You know, there's this whole public persona, I think, that you're, you know, you're probably speaking to and... You know, there's definitely this air of, like, presenting yourself in a certain way. Right. Actually, um, you know, a lot of the guys that I know, they're some of the funniest damn people I know. You know, really? when you get them, just, you know... Uh, matter of fact, I have a mastermind that I meet with here in, in Tampa of, of some guys, and, I mean, you know, we've had to kind of put some systems in place that keep us from fucking off, because we just... Sometimes we just hit, like, I have a blast. You know, we just enjoy being silly and cutting jokes and, you know, and... and you know, we're fairly, when we say internet marketers, I don't consider myself necessarily an internet marketer because I just happen to leverage the internet to coach and mentor people, mm-hmm. you know, um, all over the world. That's that's all that really means. And, and I do some, you know, attraction marketing, you know, online. What is, a, what um, is attraction marketing? Sorry. I, that's... Uh, you know, it's, it's where instead of going out trying to tell everybody, here's what I do, here's what I do, here's what I do, here's what I can do for you. This is what so many people end up falling into. Um, rather than um, speaking to what people are already listening for or um, sharing language. And, you know, Tim knows a lot. You know, you can use NLP and neurolinguistics for all kinds of weird shit, you know. But, you know, for me, it's just it's about framing things in the most attractive and seductive way possible so that, you know, I can help this person, so I can serve this person. Um, that's attraction marketing probably more than anything. Um, you know, I'm using language that's descriptive, that triggers pictures, you know, and those sort of things. And, you um, you know, it's just, it's into, it's really, it's so that I'm crafting my most ideal offer, uh, you know, crafting, articulating and communicating my most ideal offer and in, in the way that I can help this person and solve their problem to the most ideal prospect. Mm. You know, that's, that's what I like to do. And that's the only thing I use, quote unquote, the internet for. Um, but the vast majority of what I do is a lot of, you know, it's offline stuff. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking with people on the phone or I'm doing, um, you know, I'm delivering some content online, but you know, to, to answer your Tim's question. I mean, you know, we we're and I bet you guys are too. I know Tim is. I mean, you get fairly intense about you know your craft and your, you know serving people, and you know I, at least I do, and I know some of these guys do. And there just comes a time though when it's like, okay, you just pop the top off, and you know, just you, you relax and you're more yourself. But there's definitely could be a, per, a public persona uh, that some of these guys I think maybe take too far, or they're just trying to put up a facade of like, you know. Um, it's all seriousness. It's all business. It's all money. You know, mm. uh, the, the, I might be generalizing to some degree, but I think there is some of that that happens. But some of the people I know that are at a high level, just they're not like that. They're cool as hell. You know, uh, it's interesting you, you, when you mentioned attraction marketing because I'm glad you started to answer the question before because I was saying 
does it? I was about to say, does it involve a magnet or anything <laughs> like that? Yeah, because um, I'm not. No, I, I, it, 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 it requires me being naked and seducing you. Ooh. <laughs> okay, right. Tim, I think okay. you can do this. I think. Ah, ah, you know what? I mean, as, as Woody Allen, Allen said, you better be bisexual. You double your chances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bisexual, by the way. Just in case anybody uh, listens to this. I am purely and utterly Bi- homosexual. <laughs> no, I'm not. I am. Um, you are bipolar. Bipolar, yeah. 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 I, I'm a bipolar bear. I wonder, what, what do you... Co- oh, no, there's a joke there. But Okay, so you talked about attraction marketing, and then you said, I want to explore this a little bit further, because this is really interesting to me. And then you said about uh, you know, you, how you frame things as like, you know, imagine that if you did this, you did this. Do you know, two words popped in. Do you know what that is? What's that? Conversational hypnosis. That's exactly what conversational mm-hmm. hypnosis yeah. is. So it's kind yeah, of yeah, it, totally can be. Yeah, it's kind of like where you put the the person in the situation <clears> so they can imagine. You know, it's like if you if you're a car salesperson, can you imagine you, yourself with the top down on the car and the wind blowing through your hair? If nobody said that to me, obviously, and you're going down <laughs> the Pacific Coast Highway and you got and suddenly you place sure. somebody in that position, it's no different to here. Hold the puppy. Hold the puppy. Yeah, yeah. yeah foot, yeah, right, yeah. My yeah. wife's tried to do yeah. that. I mean, I've got three of the bastards at the moment. And they're like, right. hold the puppy. Give her that puppy and you're dead. You're dead. Because I know yeah. I know the minute it hits her hands, it's coming home with us. You know, so... You're going to hate me. You're going to hate me for what I'm about to say, Tim. I doubt it. Um, I doubt it. No, you'll make fun of me anyway. I will definitely so do that. So the first time I... <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard and actually got um, Joe Vitale, who I know you absolutely dearly <laughs> love. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. You almost Kill. spit. Olivia, you almost Olivia. <laughs> no, I think you're liking no, no, a no, lot, no. I think. No, this is yeah, no, so here's the thing. So I actually uh, had bought his, um, he has a, it's copywriting, copywriting hypnosis or something like that or whatnot. <laughs> That's actually where I first heard that term that you just mentioned. And now I had been, a, a, um, I had been exposed to, you know, NLP and things like this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the guy. He's here in Tampa and I went through one of his classes, but. Um, yeah, I, I actually learned a lot about framing and some of those things from that. But then, of course, I went deeper into copywriting. Copywriting in general, when you get really good at it, it uh, it is. It's a lot of conversational hypnosis in a sense and breaking people from their trances. Their current, yeah, because, listen, people are walking around hip, hypnotized all the time. Mm, oh, of course they do. Yeah, of you course know. they do. When people talk Literally. about it being an altered state, it's like, it's not really that altered. We drift in and out no. of it on, a, on an hourly basis. You know, it's just, exactly. it's, just a diff, it's a different state to when you're fully aware and present. That's the only difference, I think. So, yeah, exactly. um, Tony, can I ask a question? Because since you know you started to describe what you do, but uh, I went to your to your you know, actually I went for five minutes at a, uh, into your website because I was extremely busy and I couldn't research your, uh, how I used to do. But so you said that you that's <laughs> yeah sorry about that. But that that that's hint for like your shit was boring and I didn't really. No, say yeah, <laughs> that's that's what I was <laughs> that's what I was hearing there. I, I know the words. Are you heard that? Say that. No, you that's what. That. Yeah, yeah, I heard that between the lines. <laughs> shit. Yeah, you just come sorry about let's that. Get, let's get let's talk about values work because we could say you know where there's the most you know where there whatever's highest on your values list is where you'll spend your time and you'll make time for. But what you're saying is is so low on your values list it wasn't that important and so hey yeah shit out. okay so, like, let me go out. Do you know something? <laughs> this podcast actually is important to him and it's important it's funny because um i like when, when you it, talk when, about me you know i know we're, we're, in, we're, in the third person thank you man yeah yeah <laughs> this fucker over there i'm po- pointing because you're next to him he, I, he, actually there's a really cool divide in my skype thing where it looks like you could just poke him in the face and i'll be asking <laughs> you to do that later but the one thing i like well not the one thing i like about Olivier, i like loads of things about oh, Olivier, one. other than his frenchness <laughs> Yeah, but one of the things I like about Olivier is he contacted me to do this podcast just to have, I think, to have me on as a, like a, a guest or a, a, co, a co guest for a week or two or whatever, and we end up doing it together. But, you know, I, I'm talking about, and I'm not at all money motivated. You know, I'm, I'm really not. I'm just saying, well, what's the long term plan to this? And he said, well, I just want to enjoy it. And I've thought, fuck, I have not come off one of these calls thinking that was fucking funny. That was brilliant. That was like a night out with my mates down the pub. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, the only thing different for me is because I want to do them later in the day so I can have a beer. This dick's normally drinking beer. And for me, I may have clients in the afternoon, you know. So so I'm drinking fucking... Okay. Can I, can yes. I go back to the question, man? Yes, yeah, please. Sorry. 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 So, Tony, just, uh, okay, that was what I wanted to ask. I went to your website, right? So I, I've seen, 
I've seen coaching, okay? I've seen coaching. <laughs> yep. Right. But at, at the same time, I see this big, big advertisement about, is it business development, make money as, as your, you know, to, to, with, your, with your business or something like that? Is, is it like how? So are you helping your, your clients also with their business? How to be more in their marketing? Yeah. Is it something like that? Yeah. So the tagline for TonyTeagarden.com is turning your problems into profits. Mm. And that's been a bit of a interesting piece. Matter of fact, the podcast I'm going to be launching here shortly is is also called Turning Your Problems into Profit mm. Podcast. And so for me, what I've discovered in doing the deep work um, in the coaching and, you know, and I've done, um, you know, a lot of personal coaching my own self gone through, you know, everything from, you know, from uh, just NLP to emotional healing um, you know, shadow work, mirror work, all kinds of, you know, uh, breath work, you name it, meditation, mm -hmm. you know, Tim and I have a lot of that stuff in, in common as well. Um, you know, what I've discovered is that my journey of transformation within my business has also came from not just unlocking my business problems, but also unlocking um, my own personal challenges. Mm. Uh, you know, what I value, how I see the world, how I act upon the world, how I, you know, there's a, a saying, I remember... Um, that Dan Kennedy mentioned in, when he redid Psycho-Cybernetics, and it was, you can never outperform your own self-image. Mm -hmm. And there was something I held very fascinating about that concept because, you know, I had noticed throughout my life where that had rang true, um, my perception. So, um, you know, what I've discovered is that now that I work with coaches, experts, specialists, and a lot of these are people that are life coaches or uh, you know, healers, um, nutritionists, you know, all types. What I've noticed is a component that's really been challenging for some of my clients to put into words is that there has been stuff that we go into in their personal lives within their own, how they see themselves, how they, uh, what they value, how they uh, act upon the world that has, once we dig into some of those things and begin to help them to shift their values or to shift perspective, you know, around themselves, how they see the world, how they see their clients, mm -hmm. how they see serving their clients, um, that it's shifted their income ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so many, you know, like, like Tim, I'm not money motivated either. Mm -hmm. I do pretty good. Um, you know, I have aspirations and things that I'd like to, I, I've realized I can help a lot more people when I'm rich than if I'm poor, mm -hmm. you know, so that's something that I've, that I've, I've have adopted. Um, you know, but it's been definitely fascinating to see, like, you know, turning problems into profits. That's what I did. Mm. You know, if I, I don't have time, but I mean, if I told you, you know, how fucked up I've been, you know, in my past life, which I'm sure we all <clears throat> can point to where we have been, it's not been a simple journey. It's mm. not been an easy journey. And it's been riddled with a lot of challenges that I confronted, I moved through, and just so happened to support me in being a better coach and mentor in the work that I do. Mm -hmm. See? Oh, yeah, I've got I've got a couple of questions actually. Fucking show got too damn heavy all of a sudden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Um, See, I'm a serious bastard. You kill the atmosphere right now, just like oh shit. A, pe a penguin, a penguin walks into a bar and asks for a pint of beer. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a rabbi. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw a great penguin joke, a penguin thing. On, oh, no, I can't, on, I can't remember what the joke is. Yeah, he hates it when I start to tell jokes because I always forget the punchline before I get to the end. It's, it's the worst. Okay. It's the worst. So, so there's a couple of things I want to ask you, uh, Tony, because you, you mentioned something then, and, and whereas I don't want to put words into your mouth by because I'm going to ask you the question, but but it's something yeah. that, that that I've seen. Do, do you, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, give me a percentage. I know you don't know, but just, just in your yeah. personal experience of how many people have got into coaching or the, the sort of wellness, self-help type industries that originally started because they were working on themselves? Oh, my God. All of them. <laughs> yeah. That, that line. All I mean, of them. I, I, was, I, mean, I was thinking 80, 90%. I mean, maybe, you know, I'm not sure. because no. I'm not sure about no. Olivier, to be honest, although I know he's gone through some tough shit as well. But, uh, yeah. it, you know, it's like, this is what frustrates me about coaches. Like, you know, I, I had a client recently and she's, she, you know, she's a bit overweight. And she's like, well, I can't put my website, my picture on my website. I said, of course you can. You know, first of all, you're not a fucking gym instructor. 
You know, I understand right. if you're a dream instructor, there may be a credibility issue. But the second thing is, it's all about results, what we can do for our clients. Our life doesn't have to be perfect. You, know, you think I've probably been drinking Gatorade out of this. This is neat fucking vodka top, topped up with absinthe, for crying out loud. We've all got our problems to deal with. But no, but well, seriously, let me, yeah, let, go on. Let me cap on top of that real quick. So I, you know, I think it's about context, okay? Mm-hmm. Because if you're, you know, if you're overweight and you're telling and teaching someone that you can, uh, let's just face it, in this day and time in our Western culture, you know, if I'm 80 pounds overweight and I'm saying, hey, listen, join my weight loss program, mm-hmm. you know, that's out of integrity. Yeah, I agree. In I opinion. agree. I agree. Right. Now, and I know there's some gray lines there, but, you know, but I think the context is, of that is, let's just say, you know, I'm 20, 30 pounds overweight. And I've lost over 100 in the last, you know, X amount of months. Yeah. And listen, I can help you do the same thing, uh-huh. too. Now we've got some context. Now we're a bit more integrity. Now that person is speaking more appropriately to a specific audience that is inspired and sees this person as someone who can serve them and support them. Uh, you know, you, uh, you just, uh, I, I just had a, li- a mini aha moment then. Mini, mini. Don't, don't get too I carried saw away. It. I saw it. You no, look like you're about to you jump out of your underwear. You should it, please. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you were wearing underwear no, so you didn't jump up. I'm, I'm naked below the waist, below oh. the desk. That's don't, what, I, yeah. Just oh, please yeah. stay seated, please. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, <clears throat> I was going to do uh, two guys stood on a bridge <sighs> taking, taking a piss, and one said, this, cold, this water's cold, isn't it? And the other one said, yeah, it's deep too. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> I wish I wish anybody listening to this could see the other two people. <laughs> this is awful, uh, man. This yeah, is awful. it is awful. It's awful. <laughs> awful. It's like uh, animal oh. So here's the thing. So three words came into my mind then, and I was immediately reminded of two people. I'm actually not that keen on either of them, but I think what they've done is great. Uh... So the three words that came into my, my mind then was follow my journey. People mm. like a journey. So, so the first person is Chris Gillibu. He started a website. Yep. He said, I'm going to go to every country in the world. And people are like, because yep. then it becomes aspirational. Oh, fuck. I want to go to every country in the world. People follow it. Don't get me wrong. Chris Gillibu is a very, very good writer. He did a brilliant job uh, when he hired, um, what's the name? One, she only goes by one name. He did his website. I can't remember all the websites. The same now, but his was brilliant to start with, really innovative. But it was all about follow my journey. Watch me go from step to step. And then I was um, thinking about Adam Baker. I don't know if you know Man vs. Debt. And um, Adam, um, yep, same thing. He was massively in debt. And it's like, follow, I'm going to, every month, I'm going to catalogue it, I'm going to show you my stuff, you know, and my, my um, incomings, my outgoings, and I'm going to, you know, photocopy and put them up. And it's kind of what you're talking about then, it's, you know, with people, it, it, in terms Pat of... Pat Flynn's another one, by the way. Who, sorry? Pat Flynn's another one. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mainstream example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 <clears> there's <throat> a lot of people have done that, and I'd never really stopped to think about it like that, in terms of... Because people, you know, when I say to, you know, so I'm one particular coach that I'm working with at the moment, and um, <clears throat> he's got, had a really fascinating life, and I'm saying, talk about it. Mm. But, you know, the one word, seriously, the one word I hear more than anything else, and people that contact me for coaching, is, you resonated with me. I mean, I know that's, a few, that's a few words, but it's the resonate. And it's because, yeah, I know, when I talk about taking ecstasy in my 20s, and when I talk about getting drunk and doing stupid things and when i talk about having anxiety and generalized anxiety disorder which i still have to deal with you know on a regular basis then i know a lot of people are going to think oh he's not a perfect life coach i'm not going to hire him but i don't fucking care about them i want the people that think yeah. okay he's a real human being joe i can remember sitting down with body pasca my my uh, originally my meditation teacher and i've got a, a, a different one now um and we sat down to do this sit. So there's probably 10 of us on this course. And it was on like a, I think it was on a mindfulness course. Or I, I can't remember now because I've done a few with him. And he sat down and his first words were, oh God, I've been so stressed this week. I'm like, fuck, this guy's a Buddhist scholar. You know, he's got Bodhi in his name, Bodhi Paskett, Bodhi Paskett. You know, he's just like, and, and then he brought it home to me. It's just like, that's why I like him. Dude. He's honest. Sorry. Can I can I interrupt just? Yeah, just, I, just I, 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 I want to say something Sorry. for the fifteen subscribers 
you know, that yeah. we have and that they have heard this story for five times. Apologies. Go on. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but we didn't, have, we didn't have 15 subscribers when I first told it. We did probably... But maybe, maybe they went back. Can you imagine? But, but yeah, yeah, I can. But, it's, but it comes back to what we're talking about, what Tony's talking about, about really, I think the word is authenticity, about being yourself. <clears throat> And then attracting people well, who, are like, who, who get that. I'm very systematic about this, and you know, obviously because it's something that I that I educate and, and teach on. And a, there's a very big difference between yes, thank you. No, not you, there's, not you. Uh, no, 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 it's for me. It's for me. Yeah, it's, 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 oh, okay. it's a sign okay. of love. Yeah, yeah. For our podcasters, we're all on video right now, and I'm watching Tim flick somebody. Out <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Tony. So. Um, you know, it's it's for me. It's about being very sequential, very strategic about this, very mindful about the approach. If you try to be everything to everyone, you'll be nothing to nobody. That's a, that's something that I believe. Um, that is so inappropriate. Um, okay, so, not going to repeat. <laughs> not going to repeat that one. I can repeat it. That's fine. I'm French. I can swear a lot. So, for the 15 <laughs> listeners that we have, Tim, just put a, a board that says Olivier is a cunt. Sorry. <laughs> There you go. We've now, and for those there. of you that couldn't understand that, he said cot. Yeah, cut. yeah. Like, cut. lay on a cot. Yeah. It's a cot, <laughs> which is... Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, you know, my thing is, is and, and here's the, the funny part, and, and Tim, I know you will agree with this, and it, it's a bit adverse to what you were saying, but I think it's in alignment. Um, you know, you and I had, I don't know if you remember, there was a blog post, and you were so eloquent in your approach on this. I, <laughs> I, I did a blog post. It was pretty epic. It was, like, probably the biggest blog post I ever did, and it was called The Unfucked Formula. And I remember going through this, you know, this, it was an acronym. The unfucked was an acronym. It was actually spelled P-H-U-C-K-E-D. And so, you know, it was funny because there was something, and I don't remember the context of it, but I remember Tim saying, do you really think, in the comments section, he was like, do you really think that you need to be something or other? And I know that was, he, was, he was being very tastefully, uh, you know, kind of calling out like, hey, you know, is that correct? And so I, I'm telling that story because, you know, telling your story and so that people resonate with you is one thing, but having the competency and the tools to facilitate that journey, the tools that maybe it took me to get to where I'm at might not necessarily uh, be tools that I'm qualified or that I have mastered that I can actually teach and support other people in going through. I think that's why I love what Tim does because he actually teaches the tools, of being a life coach like the you know because you know this is one thing tim and i are really passionate about his values work and and he's got you know this phenomenal book that because he's lived it he's worked it he's coached what hundreds thousands of people i don't know three but you know <laughs> million <laughs> yeah. so you know but the thing is is that there's this competency that i believe also has to be not only because i could be competent in going through my own journey right mm-hmm. But being able to facilitate that journey in other people without understanding and mindfully, ha- you know, having those tools and knowing what those tools are, um, and implementing those and, and working with other people and having that competency, I think can be very dangerous. So, you know, Tim, to, to go back to say, like, of all the people that we know that are, you know, that are coaches or in the personal development that got into that because of their own journey, because of their own shit that they had to go through, I think there's a lot of them mm-hmm. now. How many of those became competent, mm-hmm. effective? Mm-hmm and efficient at facilitating that transformation. That, I think, is a whole other story. Mm. Mm. I agree. So, I have no, to agree, actually. Yeah. No, no, I, I agree. I mean, because there's a lot of coaches out there that, that, that definitely aren't competent. But I, w- I would add this, or and I would add this, that I don't think, you know, so let, let me take my client as an example, you know, being overweight. I, I, I don't think that's the determining factor. I don't think that's the thing, are you going to succeed or not? Um, because True. because it because it doesn't really undermine my credibility. You know, you know. To me, it's like does it undermine your credibility? I talk about this a, a lot. If you're a doctor and you get sick, or you're a hairdresser and you go bald, or you're a dentist who loses right. a tooth. You know, at the end of the day, we're all human and we all have our. You know, you, you talked before about shadow work, and I, I'm presuming that's mm-hmm. Debbie Forge stuff, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Which I, I think's fascinating stuff, and I, and I agree with the premise of it entirely. Can what you, I've read about it. So, Can you explain that, please? The shadow work? It, it's just that we all have this dark side to it. We all have, you know, so for um, for anybody that's into NLP and know, know that one of the people that they modeled to start with, it was a, a lady by the name of Virginia Satir, uh, and S-A-T-I-R, and, and she died in the late 80s of stomach cancer, and she was, I don't know, late 70 at the time or whatever. 
and uh, there's a Virginia Satir Foundation. You can go and buy her stuff really cheap. Like I bought like a 20 CD set for like $10 or whatever because you just want to get a message out. And she was the greatest family therapist of all time without a shadow of a doubt, you know. But she talked about parts. And so this is a bit like shadow work in terms of we all have this part. So Tony has the funny part, and I've seen that. Tony has the mischievous part. I've seen that fucker when he posted the outtakes of an interview I did with him on YouTube. <laughs> well, that well, that, it was great, actually. Anybody, we should post a link to that. It's really funny because yes. he asked me about anchoring. He says, and we, we kept collapsing with like corpsing, <laughs> I think they call it in the dream. We kept corpsing. Yeah. And he said, well, and I said, look, none of this shit works. I'm just doing it, you know. For, you know like, <laughs> and then the bastard put it on YouTube. So, um, oh, so, and, and he's got his serious side. He's got his money-making side. He's got his romantic side. He's got his dark side. We've all got a dark side. And, and, what, and shadow work is almost about not trying to suppress that. In fact, and Tony, I've only read the one book. So if I've got, you know, you've sure. probably done more work than I have on it. So, um, you know, it's just about... Yeah, just accepting that that's part of you. Yeah, there. You know, it can be summed up as we are one person with many selves, mm. right? So, you know, Tim has this, you know, persona that he, you know, is is sharing with us today in this conversation. When he goes home, he'll be, you know, the his, the husband will show up, you know, in the persona of that. And then there's the, you know, if he's a brother, he's got that persona, you know. So there's all these multiple selves that we have, and uh, yeah, it's it's like when you try to, you know. If there's something that that you're repressing or something that you um, are judging about yourself, which you know can happen quite a bit, mm-hmm. um, whether it's behaviors, whether it's actions, things that you've done, you know, it's, it's suppressing that takes a lot of energy. You know, instead of confronting mm-hmm. it, or you know, I'm not a Scientologist. I've studied the hell out of it, and I've gone through some. I've even done auditing and things like that. The one thing that he did say that I thought was brilliant is the only way out is through, right? Um, it, you know, it, and I thought that that was really brilliant from any perspective of life in that um, when you can confront these sort of things, whatever they are, if there's some sort of guilt that you're carrying or sh- even worse, even more harmful is shame. If you're feeling shameful, that takes a lot of energy and it's like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. And I love, you know, Debbie Ford's uh, analogy is, you know, imagine trying to keep three or four beach balls underwater all at the same time. It's, it's, it, you know, because it eventually becomes impossible and because it takes so much energy. No, so not as a flat, you just let the air out, mate. You haven't thought that through. Well, this is you true. Thought that yes, through, yes. You? Can I just say, yeah. <laughs> the only way out is through. So. That reminds me of a Winston Churchill quote. Um, you know, if you're going through hell, keep going. It's, exactly, it's, it's yeah. Probably, but... Same thing. But yeah, but it is. Yep. You, you, um, yeah, carry on. I, I, I just was <laughs> too, too impressed by my own joke and then... <laughs> couldn't hold it back no that'd be like it look was, at me um, I've got four fucking balls under the water actually make it eight <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you know in essence that's that's you know shadow work is is about addressing those many selves it's about you know um freeing up that energy and, and there's a lot more to it my emotional healing coach Deanna Fleming she she took me through who, who, as sorry a, as a client. who Tony Jana Fleming. Okay. All right, name. let's give her a shout out. Then. Um, if, um, yeah, it, emotional if you, healing if you, system. If you recommend her, then I'm sure she's good. Can, can yeah, you well, she her? was my personal coach. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, well, yeah, she'll come on to our yeah, podcast because yeah. no fucker else will. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, she, she'd be she won't be coming on seconds. now. Tony will go, don't, no, don't, don't, no. don't do the podcast. No, I'd be like, stay yeah. away. No, she, uh, she became, um, she was my coach, uh, supported me through a very, very challenging point in time in my life. Uh, later on became a very, very good friend and then eventually spent a lot of time with me, you know, just training me and, and sharing with me a lot of the modalities and the processes and the things like that. And it was um, it was fascinating work and it just really has been life changing, uh, a tool, you know, that's been very life changing. In, in what respect? Of, but, uh, what, do, what do you mean by life changing? When I say life changing, meaning how I saw myself, how I how I uh, saw the world, how I acted upon the world after that point, I was carrying a lot of shame at that point in time in my mm. life. Um, I had went through a divorce. I had cheated at the end of that divorce. Um, I had felt like a complete piece of shit after that, di- after that divorce. Um, you know, everybody thought I was this great guy that, you know, for getting out and I gave away my business and all this sort of thing, but I felt like a piece of shit and I judged myself and I, um, held a lot of shame for many years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, you know, I, I became overweight, um, drove my business in, you know, almost into the ground. I kind of even became a bit of a, of a, of a hermit. Mm-hmm. probably about six months seven months i didn't leave my house but like maybe oh, wow. uh, once or twice you know it was a very very dark time in my life mm-hmm. and um 
and I'm just saying because of, of also dieting, uh, because of diet, juicing, you know, these sort of things. But I allowed myself to step into those because of that work. And I'm not saying it's the only work that could have helped me. It just happened to be it showed up in my life at that point in time, you know, that it facilitated me coming out of that space in that place um, and beginning to integrate. And this is what shadow work is also is about integrating those pieces, finding the benefits mm-hmm. in all of those mm-hmm. things that we otherwise held as shameful. And, uh, you know, I was able to do that. I was able to integrate those things and find the benefits of those and how the other person actually benefited from me showing up in the way that I did. Um, now I can look back at my ex-wife. She's happy. She's remarried. She's got a little girl. Um, you know, I mean, so I can look at the benefits of all of that now rather than just looking at the dark side, um, also seeing the light side of that and, and just realizing we live in a world of duality where it's good, it's bad, it's right and wrong. It's, you know, it, mm. there's both of those in, a, in for me and what I've discovered is trying to live only one sided in that world causes a lot of that suffering, a lot mm-hmm. of that shame, a lot of that challenge. And so um, I would say that that shadow work started me on that journey of discovering all of that, you know, at that point and rediscovering and, and reaccepting myself and beginning to love myself again because I didn't. I, I hated myself. I wasn't going to commit suicide, but I wanted to be dead at one point. I can tell you. Oh, wow. Can I say something, Tony? Because because. You suddenly you 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 you. I was like this when you you just told your story. You know, it was very deep. You just shared lots of stuff, personal stuff, right now. You know, and you've been authentic. Mm-hmm. And I think me and Tim, what we are trying to achieve here with this podcast is to bring this to the world, right? And yep. one of my objective, actually, when I, when I've contacted Tim and I've told him with with his podcast, is also to to show to the world that coaches out there are normal people. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. they are normal people, and they are they are <coughs> they have issues, they are problem, and they are not scammers or cuckoos or crazy guys. It's just people that, that wants to help. And by being so honest with us, right, this is I think this is this is extremely powerful, and I like a lot what what you said. And to be so honest with us, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, it's because of that work that I'm able to to share this, and not because I'm you know any other reason than just to be. This is this was my journey. This was uh, you know I turned my problems into profits. Now I leverage those tools. Now I leverage those uh, those abilities, those skills that I've learned from all of that. There there was a saying. Um, she was an MLM trainer. Her name was Artemis, um, and she I don't know where she got it from, but she had, I remember hearing this in one of her trainings years ago. She said, "Never trust um, a man who has gone nearly apostate in his own beliefs." Mm. Gone nearly and, nearly what? Sorry. Apostate, meaning abandon his belief. I can't. I can't I like can't, so, for an example, never. I can't believe I didn't. Yeah, know never that follow. Meant, sorry. What's I'm that? Ashamed of myself. I didn't know that what that word meant. Uh, listen, I didn't either until I'd heard it years ago. Oh, so it's all it's good. okay. I'm just, I'm um, just cutting myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like never trust a. You know, I think her thing was never trust a pastor or something like that who hasn't nearly gone apostate mm-hmm. in his own belief. You know, because it's like at what point could they really relate with you? If you were at that precipice of abandoning your own belief, um, you know, and I'm not saying that has to be true for everybody, but I'm saying I believe that that has been something very instrumental in my ability to support and help uh, the coaches that I work with and the experts and, you know, to grow and to, to, to move to that next level because many of them are questioning themselves still. You know, they're experts in their own rights and they've gotten great results, but they still have this thing or this something that holds them back from fully stepping into that piece that allows them to charge, you know, appropriately for their services and the transformation they provide. Um, I really feel that that's what my journey was. You know, I, back when Tim and I first met, I was scared to death to sell a fucking $8 ebook. Mm. I never did it. Mm. Tim will know. I've never sold an ebook before, you know, because I was scared shitless. I never thought I was good enough mm. back in those days. I never thought I was enough. Mm. that mm. what I had was valuable enough or would be, uh, you know, that would be enough of a contribution to people that otherwise I would, um, you know, that otherwise I would be rejected, right? And as we know, it's all, you know, human drivers and, and being accepted and, and these sort of things and being a part of the group. Um, it's like death, you know, if you're not accepted um, and rejected. Well, so. get it, get it, get it. Oh, hang on, what's the death? I, I want to know what the what's death thing is again there. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm just awakened right now. That's my one of my favorite subjects. But uh, death, yeah, he loves death. One sec, I, I, was one sec. About, I was about to. I've got to do this. What? What do I oh, have to do? Oh no! What? Come on! 
Tony, can, can, I, can, yeah. can I ask a question before he's, I don't know what he's doing? He will, he will <laughs> launch a music. I'm playing Kumbaya. <laughs> Oh, I, I couldn't find it. I was on Spotify looking for Kumbaya. So, so he said, I, I, I sorry. Would he was like, can I be very honest with you, right? Very honest with you. No, pl- I will, no lie to me. Lie okay, to I will me. lie to you. <laughs> I, I, I found you so sexy, man. <laughs> He's speaking about French. French. Uh, Go ahead. Shoot. So I will be very honest. You know, you, you just, uh, you're talking for 48 minutes. And the more you talk, the more I like you. Actually, I like you a lot. You started to say you're a musician, you're a guitarist, uh, you know. And you just share so so intimate moments, well, not intimate, you know, like very, uh, you've been vulnerable with us, right? And yeah. I like this a lot. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's basically I like you right now. But before that, I just, I went to your, to your website, right? And your mm-hmm. tagline that you have, turn your problem into profits, right? Mm-hmm. The profit part of me, I say, oh, fuck, you know, this is how I reacted. Yeah. I reacted because sure. I'm in corporate and I know what profit means, right? I know what mm-hmm. profit means in terms of cooperation, right? There's, there's, a, there's, there's yeah. some of our values that can be, I don't know, in contradiction, in t- you know, if you might oppose yeah. when, you sw- when you put the word profit in place, right? You see what I mean? Yep. You see what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, for me, and I, and I think it's a fascinating mm. um, point, and, and it's glad that I can actually bring it up here, because I'm not only talking about money, mm. Although that's certainly the first thing that I know is going to come to people's minds. And let's face it, you know, a lot of the experts, coaches, and, and people that I work with, they value or they perceive that, you know, money is a measurement of how well they're doing mm-hmm. or that money is going to uh, support them in receiving some sort of outcome or getting some sort of outcome, I should say. You know, they've got to be willing to receive. But I'm talking about profitability and the fact of emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. physically, mentally. Um, you know, because how many people right now are at a deficit in all of those areas in their lives? Coaches and experts and specialists right. you know, included. Can, can I ch- I'm going to challenge you on this now, matey, because I, I know you, I, because I, first of all, you know, I agree with what Olivia said, and I know you, you know, uh, I, 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 we, you're not on here now because I think you're a dick. You know, we, we, there, are, there are a couple of people we're trying to ambush to get on, <laughs> but, you're, but, you're not, but you're not one of them, Ooh. you know. Uh, <laughs> Who? Uh, Joe Vitale. <laughs> Bob Proctor. Bob uh, but, uh, no. you know, so, but nobody, you know, it's like when we did wrote Rich and Happy and John said about the satellite to be rich and happy, I was immediately like, and I knew what he meant. He meant rich in spirit, rich, you know, but people aren't going to get that. Oh, yeah. and, and, and he knew damn well that people weren't going to get that. They were going to buy it because it was the exactly. rich thing. So, you yeah. know, where, where would you do that element? Can you say in, in, in honesty that that tagline is meant to convey that or is it really appealing to something baser? You know, we all know that, you know, the, the money thing doesn't, you know, that your know, happiness set point, 10% of it's your environment, which includes your financial income, et cetera. So we know yep. it's not a big determinant. It can be if somebody's, you know, struggling to pay the mortgage or is about to be, you know, homeless or whatever. Sure. So I'm, I'm like thinking, well, okay, I get that. You can get into that afterwards, but from yeah, a marketing right. perspective, is it really a bit baser than that? No, from, from marketing, it's it's money. Right, Why? okay. Because that's what no, people yeah, want. It, yeah. yeah, because, you know, hey, listen, you know, you can, it's called wrapping the pill in a piece of cheese, right? It's called, people what, buy it's what, called they, what, sorry, you've got a foreign accent. I can't I, I, tell you what you're saying. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, call, I call it, you know, wrapping the pill in a piece of cheese. Ah, right? Okay. Well, which so pill is this? Is this the, ecstasy or is this more like a pain yeah, Well, killer? that would be different. Yeah. They might scarf that yeah. down. But you know, my point is, if you try to give a dog a pill, it tastes nasty. Blah, 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 oh, okay, okay, out, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But if you wrap that bad boy in a piece of cheese, they scarf it down, mm. right? Mm. So, you know, this is kind of a, a very same concept of what I okay. support my clients in because we have to help people get out of their own way, mm-hmm. right? And here's the thing I also know. People buy what they want, not what they need. Mm-hmm. Do they need more fulfillment spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, and to profit in those areas instead of being in a deficit? Absolutely. But if I go to sell that and all of a sudden I'm telling, here's what I do. I help you to be more mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, yeah, you, uh, and financially profitable. You, you, you profitable. <laughs> you're, you're fucked. Yeah. yeah people, don't, people don't think so much about that. But now in my marketing, my communication or my communication strategy, I do lace those things in there because let's face it. You know, what's the real need? People don't want profit. They want the benefits of the benefit from profit, mm-hmm. meaning yeah. they want the prestige. They want the recognition. They, you know, they want their yeah. family to, to, to like be proud of them that, you know, dad or, or mom is like, you know, they're, they're generating all of this income and they're helping to, you know, 
pay for my college, you know, all that sort of things, right? They let's just face it, we know that's what people want because at the root of it, that's what they need. I get into all of this other stuff later on down the road if it's even necessary. Mm-hmm. You know, with people where, and I think that's what a lot of my clients. I've got a lot of video testimonials. I don't believe in doing written testimonials anymore because they can just be bullshitted so much. So everything I do is video testimonials, and I got a ton of them. And, and a lot of my clients don't get all offended. No, I'm not offended. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not <laughs> I'm just offended. kidding. That, that, in uh, my space, actually, in my, in my well, no, space, I agree. That, in my that's space. why if I've got a client who has a, has a website, I link through to the website. To, to give it some sure. authenticity. So, no, I actually agree with you, Tony. I, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, but you're not in the money-making niche. I'm talking about in my niche. You know, there's so much of that bullshit that goes on. You know, right, you know, right. Making up testimonials, making up income claims and all that. You know, like one of my clients, she did $25,000 in, in uh, January. Um, she'd never made that kind of... She was selling a $29 a month membership. Are you still, are you you know. still working with prostitutes? I didn't know. I thought you'd stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry oh, right. i know that's a niche of totally. your niche yeah yeah clearly clearly so you know the, but the, <laughs> the thing is is that that is definitely something i very strategically did and and um you know my girlfriend would not appreciate that so <laughs> oh is it your girlfriend that did it <laughs> yeah, right. uh, yeah. I'm trying to keep her out of the loop right now yeah good, good um, idea Good idea. So yeah, no, it, I, I, it's a healthy challenge, Tim, because it was something very strategically that I did because I know that's what people want. They want more profit, but then they also want the benefits of that profit. Yeah. And to me, the, the benefits of that profit goes far beyond buying cool shit, exactly. nice houses and all that. Yeah, you write a blog post, how you can make a million dollars in a year, and then you write another blog post, how you can be happy and content with a year. <laughs> Fucking hell, there is going to be no comparison between the, the, well, the, the yeah. opens. That yeah. million dollar one is just like... Fuck the happiness and contentment. I want the million dollars. And yet, but, we, want, but the, we want the million dollars because we think it'll make us happy. But, f- yep. pro- <laughs> but is it's the it, ultimate it, life hack. Sorry. Is, is the it the problem, actually, my friend? You know, is it the problem here? You know, this, I know, and maybe I'm going too, too big here, but uh, because of the culture that we have, which is only money driven, you know. Should we, instead of trying to, I know what you, you know, what you, what you say, and I agree with you to an extent, which is basically we, we kind of attract the, the people and then we make them realize that it's not about the money, but their value. But, you know, the entry point is kind of, you know, the attraction is through the mm-hmm. marketing and through the, through the, okay, through the, the tagline that you say, you'll make money, right? But is there like a, a maybe a, a, an education to be made here to the people to say, look, you know, Maybe it's not about the money here, you know, and the message that you, that you, yeah. yeah, you see what I mean? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is exciting. This excites me because, you know, what you're talking about and for the lack of a better term, the word is indoctrination. I know we've heard, we've heard that term and we generally, you know, attach mm. something okay. negative to that mm. word um, because there, you know, clearly has been a lot of negative indoctrination that's gone on over, over the centuries. But there is an indoctrination that I believe in communicating um, that... I don't work with everybody, mm. right? You know, I actually choose. And if I had somebody who's just like, I want to make the money, buddy, you know, like mm. I'm probably not going to work with that person. Mm. So with my coaching, oh, because, they've got, co- because they've obviously got throat cancer. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they're yeah, never right? going to pay you. They're going to die exactly. in medical bills. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, but I mean, I'm, I'm vetting constantly. So that, so my content, my emails that go out, you know, are, are always screening out, Hey, Here's who this for. If you love serving people, if you love supporting people, and if you want to, um, you know, if you want to create a better quality of lifestyle at the same time, you can have both. It's not a neither mm-hmm. or a world. And so, you know, if you have huge transformational value that you can provide to, to your audience, but yet you just don't feel as if you're doing it um, in a way where you're winning and your clients are winning, then, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's talk, Right. And if they don't fall into that, like generally the people that are all about money and fast stuff and this, that, and that they get vetted out, mm-hmm. right? Because they're not, I let them know real quick, you're not who I'm looking for. Listen, I get people on the phone with me probably every week or at least weeks that I, that I open up my phone calls and I say no to probably, you know, three, four, five people. They want to pay me money. They want to come in, mm-hmm. but I'm like, this, this isn't what you're looking for because I'm looking for the person who wants to work. God forbid, people don't like to work, mm. right? People that are just looking for the fast buck. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for people that have transform- major uh, transformational value they can offer to clients, that they're willing to do the work that it takes in order to put the system in place that I provide, 
and that they give a damn about their clients' results. And that's what they, you know, those are some of the three criteria. And if they don't hold those criteria, and believe me, I'm educating or indoctrinating, however you want to call it. Um, you know, education is, is, the Latin root for education um, is educare, which means to draw out of, which means to draw the best out of people is the way I frame I'm it. I'm so impressed. So, thank you. I, I should so, have a little bit impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that, Tim? <laughs> it hurts me to say that. Like, I am. I've no well, idea. Well, it's like... here's the reason that it, you know, I teach, you know, and I'm a big fan of, um, you know, of adult learning theory and a lot of other things, but it's un- also just understanding the human language, you know, or the English language, I should say. Um, you know, it's, yes. it's about like English. teaching. There's a difference between teaching and education. Teaching is an imparting and education is drawing out of, right? And so, you know, this is the way I, I treat my customers. Also, when they create programs, high ticket, you know, real high end coaching programs, $5,000 plus, you know, it's about creating behavior change. Um, Wyatt Woodsmall had said that, uh, you know, learning can be gauged by behavior change. If no, if no behavior changes, then no real learning has truly occurred. Only the assumption, the consumption of, of knowledge mm-hmm. or data. So um, to me, I take that as a very big piece. And so I'm, lear- I'm always within my content, educating, right, indoctrinating at the same time uh, to, you know, to screen for who that person is and also to, to let them know why it's important to realign certain value systems mm-hmm. um, so that they can get all of those things. Because I don't think money and happiness have to be mutually exclusive. I think they both can be together. Um, you know, if in the event that, you know, that you align your value system and again, you know, that's something Tim and I, you know, have talked a lot about in values and stuff. So yeah, I, I agree with you. There has to be that education along the way. And that's part of giving a shit, not only about my, my clients, but also my audience, you know, and, and helping them and supporting them get out of their own way. And I do that through free content too. And let me just say, cause you use the word indoctrination a, a, a few times then, and Richard Bandler, who's for anybody listening, doesn't know, he's one of the co-developers of NLP in the seventies and still going strong. I don't know about strong, we're still going. Um, <laughs> he, he talks about manipulation and about the yep. you know, the negative connotations. He says, but if you if you uh, call somebody on your phone, that's manipulation. You're manipulating them. You're making their phone ring. You're manipulating them. You're, you're you know in the true way the word is mean. You're trying to influence their behavior, influence their response yep. by picking it up. And he said it's just like you know. And I think with indoctrination, because we are we're all fucking indoctrinated. Every every yep. single one of us, you know, you you just look at the thing, anything, and I'll try to avoid the political route now. Otherwise, Olivia's going to have his head in his hands again. Um, <laughs> but you know, if we'd have all been born in Islamabad, we would have completely different views, and then, you know, we'd have been brought up in different society with a different way of looking at life. And 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 that's just it's yeah. how it is. It's it's people's belief that oh well, it couldn't happen to me. Mm. Yeah, right. yeah, like. Cognitive biases don't happen to me; they happen to other people. Yeah, right. <laughs> fucking hell! Tell right. me, I've got fucking hundreds yeah. of them, and I, I know I know what most of them are. And they still appear. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I also like when you talk about knowledge versus learning, because to, to me, wisdom. You know, this is my definition, and it's only my definition. It's not the definition at all. It's an opinion. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. So it's yes. like you can have all these facts in your head. I used to play a lot of quiz leagues and a, to, a, to a fairly high level when I lived in the UK. I used to play, we, we came across in this one final against these team of these guys were, um, they were garbage collectors. Now, they were geniuses in terms of the knowledge because they used to sit down and just absorb facts and they'd sit down, they'd have meetings twice together, but none of it meant anything to them. Do you know what I mean? So it's like they got this knowledge, but well, okay. So you know, the industrial revolution happened then, and they, but what does that mean? There will be no way of tying that together to anything applicable or anything useful, other than winning a quiz or a tri- trivia, whatever you want to call it over here. So I think knowledge is like it doesn't matter. You know something. I see people regurgitating, you know, the coaches NLP stuff, and you can tell they don't know it. They just regurgitate. Yeah. You know, I saw a woman just do this fucking video on uh, something called a confusion method which is so difficult to learn i don't i would never attempt it i've been doing this stuff 10 years and she mm-hmm. was talking like just like she knew what she, she had no idea she just read something about it and she was regurgitating so i, I like what you're saying about that i think you know it's it, we've got to apply the stuff or if we don't apply it what's the fucking point yeah i've always said one thing you know People are just constipated with knowledge right now. Mm. I mean, that's 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 for me. 
the one thing I rail against with what I do is I, I and I always say the reason why I'm such an advocate of higher end coaching programs, uh, higher end group coaching programs, you know, five thousand dollars plus, um, is people don't want more information; they just want the result. Yeah, right. I agree. They, the information is the out result. there, isn't it, for free? Listen, you know, here's the challenge is you're right. I mean, you know, if, if, if it was just the information, it's kind of, uh, you know, we could Google the answer. Exactly. And, and there. But the problem is, is most people don't know what the question is to even ask. Good point. Yeah. They don't know the appropriate question to ask yeah. to get the right answers. Yeah. And, and the other thing, and, and, and Tim, I know you'll appreciate this, is feedback. You know, that's one of the biggest things with my with my programs is in, in just in life in general. I've had mentors all my life, the people that are, give me feedback. Like I go out and I do something, I get immediate feedback, mm. right, from mm. the world. And then I take that feedback if I'm not able to digest it or discern it appropriately. I got a mentor, somebody I can bounce this off of. Right. And it's that feedback that is most appropriate. Mm. We, we, we went to see Jim Jeffries about, uh, I've seen him three times. We went to see him, the comedian. The last time, well, not last time, but the time before last, about a year ago. And basically, he came on stage, he said, I'm just trying out a load of material. He said, I've got a comedy special on HBO coming up in the summer. And so he was on stage for two and a quarter hours, which is unusual. Any other comedian I've ever seen like that is Billy Connolly. And he was trying to, because he wanted the feedback. You know, he actually started telling a joke where he said, I haven't got a pun sign for this yet, yet, but just let me try it out. <laughs> it was about Justin Bieber, and it was, it was bollocks. But I want to ask you a question. Yeah. So you mentioned, so do you know, do either of you guys know what the latest official, I, I don't know how it's graded as official, but the latest official cognitive bias is called? No. no I'm going I'm to tell you what it's called and then tell me what you think it means. It's called the Google effect. Huh. So you, you'll search only what you're... Searching for, for um, what you believe, something like that? Or? No, it, it's, it's basically people don't retain as much information as they used to because they know they can go and look it up whenever they want. So yeah. we have this belief that we maybe have got more information in our head than we, the, that we really have ah, okay. just because we know that we can just pick up our phone and check the answer to something. You know, I, and my wife drives me nuts. If there's anything like... You know, I, I don't even say... Well, this happened the other night. So we're watching a film with Richard Gearing. And Richard Gearing, I can't remember what the film was called. It wasn't particularly good. But he played this 62-year-old guy. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. He just, you know, he's obviously way younger than that, you know, whatever. And uh, so immediately my wife's on the phone checking out all Richard Gere is. And he was actually old. I couldn't fucking believe it. The guy, that's, he, he's a great example for turning Buddhist, I'll tell you. He's about 64 or something. He looks incredible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nice yeah. story, Tim. Yeah. It was, <laughs> have I not told that one four times before? No, no, like this me. one is new. It's Thanks a new one. Me. Well, yeah, Thank last you. week, so that's probably why. For the 15th yeah. subscriber, please rate Tim's story today. Yeah. Okay. In the in the box below. Is there a box below? There's at least there's at least maybe two and a half minutes of good shit in this podcast. I think there's where where, where was that? <laughs> Where the fuck can was you, that? Can you point this out to us? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just send the recording to Tony. He can let us know where that is, and you can cr- and, you, and you can edit it accordingly. Actually, uh, actually, actually, no. You know, you're wrong, my friend. Because um, let me tell you this: because we're approaching the hour, and we need to actually we we went over the we, hour. We've gone over uh, the hour again. We always do. Always do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had I had I had this. Uh, it's not cognitive bias, but I had this um, idea of my in my head when I've you know quickly check your website to say, oh look, this guy is only about the money, and mm-hmm. and I'm 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 really I was mistaken, so I, I have to apologize to you, my friend. I was extremely when you start with your story, personal journey, you know what happened to you. This is this is that was extremely to me. It it it. It, it shifts something because I could relate it to you, right? Yeah, As Tim mentioned, yeah. I've, I've had shitty things happening. It's still happening to me right now. And this is actually what's important, I think, to, uh, for me and for Tim, I don't know, is to, to have these sharing moments, you know, which are real, mm-hmm. authentic moments, right? And mm-hmm. you did that. And I think out of this, I'm, I'm extremely pleased that you've been here on this, on this podcast, actually. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, and uh, I'm glad to have been here. Well, there you go. Very awesome, man. Yeah. Well, so I went from I went from dickhead to an okay chap. No, 
uh, yeah, from Dick. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. no, maybe not Dick. No. Yeah, yeah, you never. You Profit mongering yeah. scoundrel. Yeah, scam pyramid, mar- pyramid <laughs> marketing MLM. Well, LM- no. and, and you know, and I appreciate the feedback, you know, because again, I know that that's. Uh, that's certainly, and, and it's one reason why I'm doing my podcast and coming out. You know, I coming out. I, I've, You're coming out. Oh. I'm coming out of the closet. Yes. Oh, okay. Coming. I'm coming out of the podcasting Fantastic. closet. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Right. Very good. And uh, yeah, because that that's partly what this this is really stems from is, is turning those problems. And and there's a lot more. I'm sure. You know, um, I don't like to talk about the problems unless I can also share how I've been able to leverage those and turn those into something meaningful and, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, mindful. So cool. Yeah. Tony, thanks Thank mate. You um, you came on at late notice. You, you, you did bail us out, but, uh, Olivier said, okay. we'll do it together. And I got, I thought, no, why, why the fuck <laughs> can't I ask Tony? Tony's cool. I always enjoy talking to him. He's always a good laugh. He's got a good sense of humor. So I, I, I yeah. uh, well, we both really appreciate you coming on. So thanks very much. And yeah. actually, t- Tony, you need to come back. See? You're more than you're there more you than an okay guy, actually. Yeah, you're also. You need to come back in Tim's place. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing a Floridian exactly. shift from from Orlando <laughs> to Tampa for my co-host. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, mate. Th- thanks very much, and we'll, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.